Got snow? Why you need a snow melt system when heat trace video number five starts now. Hello, Deshaun again here from the Dale Prentice Company, and this is heat trace video number five of our six part series. If you haven't seen the other videos, please go back and watch those because it's a wealth of information and knowledge, and hopefully you enjoy it. For this video, we're going to talk about snow melt systems, roof and gutter, and also surface snow melt. So let's start with the roof and gutter. So why do we need roof and gutter ice systems? Well, let's take a look at this picture here. In this picture, you have two different buildings, and usually when I do a lunch and learn, I ask the attendees, what's the difference in the roof lines of these two buildings? But for the sake of time, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just tell you. One building has icicles, or what we call ice dams, and the other one does not. My next question is, why is that? Well, the reason for that is because one building is heated, the other one is not. Let's take a look at this. So in this picture, you see a building. Basically, when a building is heated, the heat rises. When the snow comes, the sun beats down on the snow melting some of the ice in between on the roof line. When that melts, that water goes down the heated part of the roof until it gets to the edge where you have the outer wall and the edge of the roof. What we call that is the roof eave. Now the roof eave is unheated. That means that the water will end up freezing back up again, causing it to form ice. When the rest of the water starts trickling down, it hits the ice and it goes one or two ways. One of the ways is it seeks weak points in the roof that causes leaks and it leaks in the building. The second is it continues to flow into the gutter and over the gutter and it forms ice dams like this. Now in this case, the ice dams are forming and you have a lot of heavy ice. Eventually that ice will melt and in that period of time, you will see that some of those icicles fall down, which can cause a very dangerous situation for people below. Hopefully when the snow and ice falls down, no one's around. Another situation you can have for a building, you have heavy snow loads on that building. Heavy snow loads can cause the roof to weaken, eventually causing water leaks. With a weakened roof, you eventually can have a collapsed roof. Another situation that we can run into is when we have water leaks in the building and eventually that could cause water damage. If water damage is untreated, you can have mildew and also eventually mold. And mold can be, be very dangerous. A lot of times it can cause serious illness and also it could cause death. What are some of the solutions that we can have preventing these ice dams? Well, one is a manual solution. This is a considered a manual solution where you have an actual person up on a roof trying to clean it off. Now, as you can see in this picture, you have a guy on the roof that has his work cut out for him. But if you look over in the corner in the red area, you see that the building still has ice dams. So you're really not doing too much except for cleaning the snow off the roof. So you can still have ice dam build up and eventually you can have building damage. Another situation that you run into with manual uh, roof cleaning or snow cleaning is the fact that it's very dangerous. You can slip and fall and injure yourself off of that roof. Not only that, but a lot of times in snowy areas, when people try to remove snow, a lot of times people may have heart attacks because the snow is so heavy. Now, finally, Let's say, for instance, you do it the right way if you're doing manual roof cleaning and you hire a contractor to do it. Well, in this picture, you have two men in a bucket and you have an expensive piece of equipment, which is the lift. And usually when you have that, you're required to have a ground person as well. So that's three people in an expensive lift. So this owner really paid a pretty penny for manually de-icing his roof and gutters. So what is another solution that you may have? I'm glad you asked. Well, that would be electrical 
snow melt systems. Now electrical snow melt systems that I'll talk about in this video today will be a traditional system and also a rim panel system, which I like to call a hidden panel system. Now a traditional heat trace system has roof heating cables on the eaves of the roof itself. It looks like a sine wave, essentially, if you remember in math class in high school. So this is a basic and straightforward system. This system has been lasting for many, many years. Essentially, the goal is not to melt all of the ice and snow off of that eave area, but it's to make sure that the water continues to run and flow into the gutter and then out the downspout. We accomplished this by using self-regulating heat trace cable. Now, remember we used to use self-regulating heat trace and we're used to the previous videos using self-regulating heat trace on the actual pipes. However, in this case, this is self-regulating heat trace, but it's rated for outdoor use. So the basic setup of a roofing gutter system is similar to how we do a regular pipe system. So first we'll have power distribution, which is a circuit breaker. From that circuit breaker, you have some sort of controller. A lot of times we'll have a snow melt controller or like you've seen in a previous video of, of the controllers, we can have an access 30 system as well. The controller is energized when the signal is sent from the snow melt sensors. Now we have two different sensors that we're gonna refer to in this part. The first one is a CIT, which is a snow melt sensor that goes pretty much on a roof or close to the roof. And the second is a gutter sensor, which is a GIT. Now the CIT sensor, basically it has to meet two different criteria in order to energize. The first one, it has to be either 38 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and it has to see moisture in the cup. The second is a GIT, which goes in the gutter, and it has to do the same thing. 38 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and it also has to have moisture on the actual sensor. Then it energizes the controller. Now from there, you'll run to a power connection kit. Now we have several different types of power connection kits that we can use in this case. However, the main ones that we use is one that you're familiar with already, if you've seen some of the other videos, which is the right click PC. But another one that we can use in a weatherproof box is a heat shrinkable one called a FTC P. And of course, we have an end seal at the end, which is a right click E. Now installing the heat tray system on the roof, you'll have, like I said before, the sine wave. And we usually mount the cable with these little brackets called a JMKRC. Now the JMKRC is mounted with adhesive. And what we need is the cable a foot above the snow eave. So let me give you an example. Let's say for instance, the snow eave is only a foot tall. So what we wanna do in order to run at the top of the sine wave, we wanna run it another foot. So in total, it will be two feet above the actual roof line. Now for placing the cable in gutters, usually we use this formula. If the gutter is six inches or less, we'll have one particular cable in that gutter. If it's above six inches, and every six inches after that, we'll add an extra cable. So say for instance, an eight inch gutter, we'll use two cables in that gutter. If you just have one single cable in the gutter, we'll just lay it in the cable and you'll be all done. However, some customers, if we have multiple cables in there, they want a bracket to secure the cable. So we'll use this RC bracket in order to secure the cable with adhesive. Another bracket you can use is called a GM rake. And basically what that does is when you're putting the cable down the downspout, for every single cable you will have, you will have a rake with it. Basically the rake is for the cable going over the sharp edges of the downspout. So if you have one cable, you'll have one GM rake. If you have two cables, you'll have two GM rakes. Now it's time for us to get into the rim panel system. Now the rim panel system was created because a lot of times architects and sometimes customers, 
they cringe when they see the cable on the actual roof. So this particular application hides the actual heat trace cable on the roof on a panel. Now some of you may say, so what am I doing? I'm exchanging the cable for a panel that can be seen. Well, let's take a look at that. So in this particular picture here, we'll see a rim Eve or a rim E. Now in this particular one, this is rated for very high snow areas. So it has three cables in the base panel. And over the base panel goes a flat panel that will be exposed. Now this panel, as I get into a little bit later, has different colors associated with it that you can get to try to blend in with the actual roof itself. We also can provide a rim valley panel. Now the rim valley panel basically goes, as, as said, in the valley, and then you can go up or you can go down the valley. And it has two cables. We have a variety of different options for different situations, where it be a pitch roof, a low roof, and also a flat roof. But we have all kinds of different panels and custom panels that we can make for your application. In a traditional roof de-icing system, it's not necessary to melt the entire ice and snow off of the eaves. However, in the rim panel system, you will do that because of the solid rim panel. As you can see in this picture here, the entire eave is totally snow free. And of course, there are no ice dams forming. You also have some before and after pictures of snow and ice dams that were there, but now they're not because of the system. Now, like I said before, we have a variety of different colors that standard that you can use to try to match the color of your roof, the existing roof, so it'll blend in. Now, if none of these colors work for you, we can also do custom panel colors as well. We have a variety of different options, like I said before, as far as panel systems. We have what is called a rim DT, which on flat roofs, it basically leads water into the drain and melts around that drain so you can have water flowing and you don't have any backups. Our rim panel system has been used in many different applications and also buildings, whether it be commercial buildings, houses, etc. So the rim panel system is an exceptional option for you for the different things that you need done as far as melting snow and ice. Now let's get into surface snow melt. So what is surface snow melt? Surface snow melt is when you put heating cables in the ground, you cover it or you pour concrete over it, you energize it, and then in the wintertime, you prevent snow and ice from building up on your walkways or driveways or stairs. So let's get into it a little further. Why do we need electrical snow melt? Well, in cold weather areas, you have snow buildup on walkways. When walkways are covered with snow and ice and people are walking on them, it's a very dangerous situation. So how do you prevent that? Well, oftentimes, companies hire other companies in order to remove that snow. So that's, again, a manual method. So you'll have snow blowers, you'll have shovels, and also power equipment in order to try to move that snow. Then after that, a lot of times they'll put some sort of a salt or chemical solution in order to melt that snow. Oftentimes, that doesn't necessarily work all the time because you can't reach all of the areas when you throw down the salt or the chemical solution. And those areas that you miss could be possible slip hazards. If you live in an area like I live, which is so cold sometimes that the salt or the chemical solution doesn't even melt the snow, you can still have issues and slipping and falling. So why are we so concerned about slipping and falling? Well, when you slip and fall, a lot of times on snow and ice, you have injuries. And when you see injuries, a lot of times you see attorneys. And when you see attorneys, you'll see it's a bad situation. Now let's see a few areas that we can use electrical snow melt systems. One is in the driveways, the walkways, stairs, ramps, or loading docks. 
Now generally, there are two different types of heating cables that we use for surface snow melt. One is a self-regulating cable, and the second is a constant wattage cable. Now the self-regulating cable, we call that electromelt. It's a very robust cable, has a very tough outer jacket because it's going to be buried in concrete. The second is MI cable, but the difference between this MI cable that goes in the ground and the MI cable that goes on pipes is that has a tough outer jacket as well because it's going to be in concrete. Now because the electromelt is self-regulating, you can touch or cross it. However, our layouts, we usually discourage that. Basically what you want to do is give us the square footage of the area and a basic write-up of the area and then we can plug it into the computer and when we plug it into the computer it'll give us back the footage of the cable and then also the spacing that the cable will have in that particular area. For MI cable you give us the square footage we'll plug that into the computer and that'll give us the actual number cable of it and also it'll give us the spacing as well. Let's now go over the advantages and disadvantages of both self-regulating cable and also the MI cable. Well, the electromelt advantages are that you can cut it out in the field. Also, that you can touch or cross it. Again, we would necessarily discourage that point. And finally, because it's self-regulating, you can repair it in the field. So disadvantages of electromelt is the fact that it only goes up to 277 volts. That means you're going to have shorter circuit runs, you're going to have a smaller amp breaker, and you're going to have more circuits in total. Another advantage is you can actually repair the damage out in the field. Now for the MI cable, you have advantages as well. The advantage is you can go up to 600 volts, which means you have longer circuit runs, you can have increased breaker size, and also it's a very durable cable and it lasts a very long time. All right, so let's talk about the disadvantages of MI cable. Well, MI cable has a cold lead that transitions from the hot and cold. Well, in that situation, you gotta be very careful not to damage that cold lead or else it damages the cable. Also, it cannot touch or cross, or else it'll continue to heat, and eventually that cable will fail prematurely. Now, let's briefly discuss the snow sensors that will go with the surface snow melt system. The first one we've already mentioned, which is the CIT. And basically, you would want that on a building up high somewhere. Now, the second one I'm gonna talk about is actually flush mount to your actual pavement, which is called the SIT and that runs back to your controller as well. I will discuss the controllers for both the ice and gutter snow melt systems and also the surface snow melt systems. We have a APS 3 and also 4C. Now the APS 3C is rated at 120 volts only and it doesn't have any ground fault protection. The APS 4C ranges from 208 volt all the way up to 480 volt and it has ground fault protection. Another feature in the APS-4C is that it is a main controller and if you have extra circuits you can add a satellite controller. The satellite controller is a SC40 and you can add up to six satellite controllers, the SC40s, and daisy chain them back to the APS-4C. We have two control panels as well for snow melt systems. They're called the SMPG-1 and the SMPG-3. The SMPG-1 is usually used for ice and gutter snow melt applications, where the SMPG-3 is mostly used for surface snow melt applications. Both of the SMPG-1 and 3 come with a controller called an EUR-5A. And basically the EUR-5A handles all of the different snow melt sensors that we talked about. So whatever situation you have as far as ice and gutter snow melt or surface snow melt, we can provide most of those needs for you. 
Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please join us for our next video, which is our sixth and final video in our heat tray series on warranty and also testing. This is Deshaun again here, always reminding you to be safe.